I Milton sometimes he's a little petty king so he Taylor was just like yeah when I first saw JP I was like thank god he's tall and Milton's like he's tall <laughs> like Milton you're gigantic ass shut right. up right like sir you were like really tall <laughs> like what <laughs> When she's been, and like I'm, a BB moment, which is like a beautiful black moment. Do we get any of those in this episode? Black. We have a chaotic vibe moment of the chaotic vibe moment. Yeah. And you're watching Black by Reality. This is Black by Daddy. And those who love us. <laughs> Hello, you're watching or listening Black by Reality Podcast, a place for Black by Baddies and those who love us. We are wrapping up Love is Blind Season 5. I just want to also thank all of the new people that we have on the channel. Uh, We had an interview with Izzy and today we have our interview with Lydia up and you guys are speaking your piece in the comments, which I am loving. I hope you stick around for this recap and future recaps. And with that, I am back with my co-host for this series, Quita. Hello. Hey. hey there. We're at the end. We're at the end of this wild, wild season. Yes. So we're gonna we're still even though we're hot off of the reunion we have to go back and talk about episode 10 first guys so but luckily we just have two weddings so <laughs> should be pretty quick <laughs> should be pretty quick um first of all though do you feel any differently about this season now that you know how it ends okay yes a little because Last, the episode nine, I was over it. I was like, I'm done here. Um, And honestly, episode 10, I was a little like, I'm done here too. Mm -hmm, But, mm -hmm. you know, um, I actually felt very affirmed to know that I was right. Because when you asked for my predictions, I predicted it correctly. And I felt proud of myself. Good job. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't do any predictions just because of screeners and whatnot, but I didn't know anything about the reunion. And mm-hmm. I was still very surprised by some of the updates in the reunion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's let's get into episode 10, y'all. So we start with Stacy. Um, she said the most shocking part of this whole process was falling in love. And with Izzy and maybe less than a week, she, they're both talking about how kind and giving and strong, all those words. Um, and she's talking to her makeup artist. Now, some people have pointed out, and I definitely made note of it. She also called Izzy exotic and hot. I was like, I know she did not just say exotic. Why would she say exotic? We know why. We know why. But that's the thing. It's like, even when I talked to Izzy, I was like, did race ever come up or your different cultures? He was like, no. I was just like, how? (laughs) How? But okay. Um, Anyway, Izzy, on the other hand, he's like, oh, Stacy has been tough to crack. But once you do, she's so tender. Um, He tells his groomsmen that he was a wreck last night because if we remember the last time we saw them they were packing and it was silence (laughs) yeah it was tense so he told the camera that he didn't think his credit score was going to be such a big deal and you know they told each other i guess that they needed space but that space was like 24 hours before their wedding what did he think was going to happen I have no clue. And the fact that he keeps saying he didn't think it would be a big deal, but he also went out of his way to not tell Stacy. So I'm just like, if it was, if you thought it literally wouldn't be that big of a deal, you probably would have mentioned it at some yeah. point prior to like 48 hours before your wedding. Totally would have. Like, you I'm know. not buying it. I'm not either. And it's driving me nuts that he just will like not. He gave a little in the reunion, but, like, he just really wants us to believe that he wasn't hiding this. So, Stacy, on the other hand, she's like, I want to marry him, but um, she said she 
she wants the day when she marries him to be laser focused on him like Mm -hmm. in the pods which means the whole time she has this whole secret that he kept Mm -hmm. hanging over it so she's like of course i don't want to say yes Mm -hmm. right right it's like how because how can i trust you like right before our wedding, I find out find out you've been keeping something like this from me mm-hmm. for this entire time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know Izzy was stressed because the way he was like bouncing his leg. Yep. Sir yep. was stressed. That <laughs> is his tell. I don't know if you watched the interview, Queen, but the way that the camera was shaking. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord. He's stressed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, so, yeah, she tells her sister that Izzy also is a Chipotle guy where she's like, I love Peruvian food. And it's just like, this is so coded. Like, can we just say what we're actually trying to say? Thank you. And I'm just like, because he, you grew up with money. Oil he, money, apparently. And We're clearly talking about he, in Texas, <laughs> oil money in Texas. Like they're talking about how much their family works hard. Um, if you're just like exploiting the land, you're not working very hard. But okay. the land is, you know. Yeah. Like, let's just be real. <laughs> let's be real. Um, yes. Yeah. So in the end. Um, her mom said that she would never ignore red flags. Mm-hmm. As we know, uh, her parents had a messy divorce. The whole right. splitting assets and things was a big deal. So that was the whole point why Stacy was like, we need to be talking about money. So <sighs> Izzy, he is still talking about how things were kind of awkward with his groomsmen. So one of them was like, let's write her something. And Stacy wrote that little poem in the pods. Izzy basically returns the favor and has the best man handed off. Mm-hmm. And it's like a silly little poem. And Stacy was like, it was very interesting. She was like, he's always my calm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was very calming and what I needed. But then I noticed, she said, but I've always asked for things like notes. And this is the first time he gave me one unsolicited. Right. And on the back end, she doesn't realize that it's actually his best man that suggests that he writes it. So it wasn't even his own original thought or idea. I mean, I don't know how they stage these, but it's if that's true, that's also a, a ding on him. But it's right. like, yeah, this is like the cooking thing all over again, where you have to get in trouble. <laughs> to actually <laughs> want to do something nice for your partner. And I hate that. I hate that when that's the case in the relationship. So, yeah, basically, okay, Dale, Stacy's dad pops up. She shows... <laughs> First of all, she shows um, the shoes. I think the shoes are Jimmy shoes from what I saw on TikTok and are like really expensive. Mm-hmm. And of course, like daddy most likely paid for that. So she was like, let mm-hmm. me see this, sh- show you the shoes. And she tells him that she's been going back and forth. Dale had zero energy for his daughter's wedding day and the advice. He was just like, well, you're just going to have to pull the trigger. And she literally goes, thanks, dad. Daddy O, Daddy Oil, Big Daddy Oil, you don't have any say on whether this man's marrying your daughter. And like, a part of me felt like maybe he knew she was going to say no because the way mm-hmm. this man showed up, like he was going to like a distant cousin's family dinner or something. You know, it was no, just like, true, like his true. hair was disheveled. He, did, he didn't have that energy like my daughter, who I love so much, is about to get married. It was very yeah. just like, and the way, you know, even walking down the aisle with her, like the quick pace, I'm just like, he did not seem like a father of the bride at her wedding at all. True, true. Yeah. So they're at the aisle. Um, they ask each other if they're good. So this genuinely looks like this is the first time they're seeing each other after they were like, we need some space to process this bullshit, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's some that's some like movie stuff. It's not something you should want on your actual real wedding day. Especially when your relationship doesn't have enough foundation. Mm-mm. To like know in that moment, like we're good. Like yes. the fact that they're like, we good. We're good. Are you good? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Crazy. So Izzy says all the same things. Tough to crack, tender, sweet at the altar. Um, and, you know, in the end, he says it's easy to run, which I kind of hate that Izzy really turns to this. Like, the, mm-hmm. I, I don't like... Um, I don't like the narrative that like, oh, you see a red flag and you act, you accurately respond to it Mm -hmm. and it's you running. It's you Mm -hmm. not being serious about commitment or the relationship. Like, I hate that. It puts it on the wronged party then to like keep things moving. Right. Right. And it's like kind of a unhealthy way. Like, not mm-hmm. the healthiest way to approach relationships. It's like if you see or experience something that you're like, mm, I don't know about this. It's like, no, we should fight it out. We should mm-hmm. fight for this relationship. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So we know how this goes. Stacy's like, I love you more than I can even explain. I want to make you happy. And I want to give you that assurance. And I want to say yes, but I would be doing us a disservice by not giving us more time and we need more time so she can't say yesterday he says he understands everyone's clapping they say i love you they kiss um so at this point did you think like oh they can they can still work this out no because it felt like the way it was like stacy was saying these things not to hurt him Mm-hmm. Or it just kind of felt like in that moment, I was like, I don't know if she'll want to keep dating him after this moment. And it also kind of felt like Izzy wasn't taking the time to process what was happening. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> it felt like he was just like reacting so quickly of like, it's yeah. okay. Here's a kiss. It's okay. Yeah. You know, and then as we see, as the moments go on and it starts to hit him, yeah. he's like upset, right? Yeah. So she's like, I don't, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was nice in the moment. And I am, like, I could see myself doing this. <laughs> of like, <laughs> obviously I'm really hurt, but I'm just like, I want to just get through it. So it's like, mm-hmm. everything's okay. Everything's okay. And then once you're alone, or at least alone with the cameras, mm-hmm. um, then you're like, oh, wow. Like, mm-hmm. I got rejected, like, all the plans so so Izzy is hurt bad. Like his eyes are glazed over and you could just tell everything's really weighing on him. He cries. He says he's tired of feeling this way. And the feeling that way is not being good enough for Stacey because mm-hmm. he has said that repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And then he talks to his mom and she's just like, I'd rather you hurt now than later, which is a healthy way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. You know, Stacy, she relieved. <laughs> she said, Woof, dodge that bullet. Done. Right. She, she tells her mom, you know what? I feel fine. And her mom's like, says that his friends claim that Izzy's genuine. So right now we're still on the track of like, this can still work out. But then later on they talk and, you know, Stacy says to his face, she's relieved. And she's like, the pressure's gone. And, you know, this was going to be the hardest thing to get through. But, you know, she wanted to make him happy. But this isn't, it wasn't right. And he's like, I'm just so confused. <sighs> First of all, we've seen this story before. We've seen this story multiple times these men don't do rejection, even if the rejection is, but we can still date, though. They don't handle it well at all. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It, it was, it's so interesting me, to me because it felt like Izzy was so f- hyper-focused on, like, winning Stacy over or proving that he was good enough for her. Mm-hmm. That Because he even says that he was like, I was so focused on her. And it's like, yeah, part of this is you have to focus on yourself mm-hmm. as well. You have to be like, is this relationship something that I'm really wanting? Is it, you know, in my best interest? How am I feeling in this? Is this what I want in a marriage? Mm-hmm. And it's like, if your main goal is just to win the girl, you still lost. And now how do you feel? Damn. Damn. 
I mean, that's very true. That's very true. Like, he was so steadfast in, like, getting married. And it's like, my dude, you, the minute you start breaking down, you're breaking down. Like, why aren't you checking in on yourself with that? Like, it's so wild. So he's just like, oh, it feels like we're going backwards, which they always say. And it's like, so what? You guys aren't supposed, people don't normally get married in a month. Like, can we stop acting like the minute you hit the altar, you can never just date after this experience? That's crazy. Right. Right. It's like, yes, you signed up for this experiment, but also you also are a real person outside of this, like a whole person outside of this Mm -hmm. experiment. So like Mm -hmm. you get to decide like, yo, this is too fast within this timeline. I do like you. Let's see if we can make it shake. Like you on can a much make your own lower rules. Literally. You can make your own rules, but I feel like it's like an ego thing. I can imagine it's probably feeling like, well, what was all this for? And just really feeling like depleted after this process. So it's like, I get it, but it's also really wild. So um, after this, now this is where I'm going to say, <laughs> people who want to apply to Love is Blind, look at me. Look at me as I talk to you. In the end, in the finale, if you get your heart broken, I want you to cry, say you're hurt, and then walk away. Don't let them linger. Don't let them keep following you. Don't let them, don't let them ask, well, what do you think about Stacy this or this that? Because you know what they're trying to do? They know you're hurt. Mm -hmm. They know you're going to say something out of anger. Because of course she would feel angry. But don't take the bait. And Izzy, I felt like every step of the way he took the producer's bait to say something messed up. So what does he say this time? <laughs> first of all, first of all, he said, I watched Titan I saw Titanic in the gym. And I just thought, that's real love. It no- nothing else matters. Baby, Jack dies. Jack died. <laughs> he froze to death. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about right now? When he said that <laughs> shit, I was like, you're not ready for marriage. You're, you're not, not ready for marriage. Sir, what? We've been, taking, we've been talking about baby Chucky over here. And this man, <laughs> this man's saying real love is Titanic. What is happening? What is happening right now? I was like, and that's why I was like, that's what, that's why you need to make that exit. You need to make that exit. You remember correctly at the end of of, with Xander, uh, Yoli was like, I'm not going to be with you. And those cameras were really waiting for something to pop off. And Xander literally says to the camera, I think you got enough now. Be that kind of bitch. Right. Because they will be playing in your face. So he's talking about the Titanic not making any sense. Boo-hoo crying. And then he says, well, it makes me wonder. You know, she's 33 years old and still single and not married. You know, I'm willing to give her everything. I'm like 29. Are you still going to be with those like 45-year-old rich dudes? that fail is like he went so far as to say i can give you everything that a rich 45 year old no you can't i'm like sir you might be mad but please don't lie you literally can't you can't even you could even purchase the house that she bought no and that's so shame like i can't (laughs) i can't either but it's like there's differences here. There's differences and some they matter to some people and that's okay. She's not a gold digger for wanting a certain life. She's not a bad person for also wanting information because this was more about me. She knew he didn't have oil mm-hmm. baron money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she knew that. Mm-hmm. She was still calling him daddy. She so, was. So you needed to be honest. And that's all you needed to do. And yet you fucked it up for yourself. So that was the end of Stacy and Izzy's uh, wedding situation. Now, is there anything else to say about this before we move on to Lydia Milton? I love Izzy's mom. And that's it. 
Yeah. <laughs> when she made the immunization like analogy, I was like, oh, oh, damn. I love it. I love it. So Lydia Milton, yo. <laughs> This is going to be so wild to talk about. Lydia said that she'll never stop being who she is. Like, yo, she has so much to fucking prove, yo. Like, it's the most annoying thing to be around a person who just has so much to prove. You can't just talk about how you're happy on your wedding day. You're still, like, defending your whole personality at this point. And it's like, it's okay if you do change because we're, at, to be human is to evolve and change and grow over time. So it's Learn okay. And grow. Learn and grow. Take some lessons. It's okay. It's okay to have some humili- humility and the human experience. But anyways, so, but she's the person that Milton needs. All right. So um, she says that Milton proved her wrong and he was the first one to really talk to her. She doesn't even say Uche's name. She calls him Voldemort, which is fair. It is. Fair. So Milton, (laughs) he says that he loves how much empathy Lydia has, which we'll talk about empathy and Lydia later because I don't, the one thing Lydia has empathy for is herself, which she should. You should, but when it comes to people she has wronged, she has wronged, somehow she's given more death stares than the wronged party. No, no, no. Anyway, (laughs) so he worked all night. (laughs) He has his backpack on. Oh, gosh. He he, he too much Got his backpack on. He's getting his haircut. You know, his boys are like, oh, you're going to finally get a like, real haircut. Um, and, you know, Milton says he's getting the jitters. He's feeling it in his tummy, which he doesn't usually get. <laughs> so, and he's like, you know, nothing in the world is 100%. He's still on this whole, this whole math stuff. It's like, sir, okay, we get it. We get it. Um, but, you know, then he also said he needed to write his vows last minute. And dumps all of his 25 million toothpicks on the ground. Yo, it's like, yo. So many. <laughs> so many toothpicks. What is going on with him and his oh teeth? Oh my gosh. What is happening? Have, I don't know. It was, he was like, where's a pen? <laughs> Everyone in the room got backpacks on, but no pen. <laughs> Which honestly, as a writer, is me. It is me. <laughs> it's like... That's one thing I should have on me at all times. And yet. Um, so, yeah. And I love that the other guys were like, whose man's is this? And like, that's you. That's, that's you right you. there. <laughs> I also are in the same boat. Right. And I love how every time Lydia's like, Milton is the best man I've ever been with. And it's like, insert clip of Milton yes. <laughs> doing something like this. Like, <laughs> so funny so funny so you know he's and Milton's like talking things up with his boys he's like you know I know you guys think I'm perfect but and then Chucky Chucky's like your spine ain't perfect what the fuck are you talking about and I was like yo 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 like wow Wow. Lydia's mom, she's like, oh, you guys balance each other out. And Lydia says she was selecting people who didn't have room for her before. So not the case now. Now Milton's talking to his dad, and this is the most awkward one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I don't know what's going on. But Milton, Milton's a little on the defense. A little? Yeah. He was not trying to hear nothing his nope. dad had to say. Nothing nope. at all. <laughs> I'm sure wasn't. So his dad's like, you know, um, other people had things to say about the timeline, but it doesn't matter. And he's, and Milton somehow still got a problem. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't care what people say. I don't <laughs> care. care. Like, calm down. He's just he's, fixing his his. Right. <laughs> He's giving you his cufflinks. Yeah, like, like, come come on. On. And, um, you know, the dad's like, the honeymoon phase, it lasts two years, which is so funny because Milton, I feel like, actually took that to heart. He's like, I heard numbers. 
that's something I can hold on to. So he's like, okay, two years, two years, I got that. <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, you know, the dad's just like, learn to fight fair. And, you know, you've seen me and your mom fight. And then Milton, Milton just come out. He's like, well, my relationship isn't your relationship. And it's like, Milton's daddy's like, I didn't even say that. I didn't Are say twice. He's like, I'm literally using my relationship as an example of, like, you've seen what not to do. Milton, oh. Milton's soft-spoken daddy, he had to stand up and just smack him upside the head for a second and just be like, I'm the only one who's been going to bat for you. Your sister can guns blaze and call on your relationship phony. So I need you to pipe down. Literally. <laughs> He's like, we're confident in your decisions. And, you know, here we go. So Milton, he goes up to the altar. He turns to this preacher and says, should I have my jacket buttoned? Milton. I'm like, you had all the smoke for your daddy, but you should have asked him that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> How about ask the man that actually dressed your little ass up? <laughs> <laughs> when you were little how do you not ask a strange man this right <laughs> and the strange man's just like yeah button that top button <laughs> um, so Lydia walks in um she says you know we've had countless of laughs and he made sure to say she was his first I guess in the pods because we're still mm -hmm. ranking people at this point um there's a man in the front row who was crying his eyes out and I was like whose man is this <laughs> 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 it's not the brother it's not Lydia's brother so I don't know who it is is it her other brother Alejandro Oh, I don't know. She has yeah. another brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was her other brother, Alejandro. Okay. So it's like, that then you start to see the whole family is like this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very Meanwhile, emotional. <laughs> but I did know Milton's sister, she had all the smoke, but she was sitting there. She was just like, okay, I'm watching my brother look at this woman as she's walking down the aisle. He look all in love and stuff. Right. <laughs> Right. And I think she said, oh, he looks so gorgeous or something at the, when she saw him. She's up. like, oh, he's so handsome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, y'all are softening up. We love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they do their thing. They both say I do. Everyone claps and they kiss too early. <laughs> and but it's whatever. It's right. truly whatever at this point. So later... <laughs> These shady ass producers were like, hey, Milton, want to pop a bottle of champagne? <laughs> and Lydia's like, what the hell are you doing? She, Milton's like, I could do it. I could do it. He's like a little kid. He's like, I could. And it's not even like, it's it's a regular ass bottle that you just twist off. And, and like, he was struggling with that. He was. He what was. Is, what's going on with him? <laughs> Milton. He's like, no, let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> I would have a, I want to have a, uh, I want to have an interview with Milton. And the interview, I want it to be in person. I'll just be like, Milton, <laughs> <laughs> open this. <laughs> I got a challenge for you, boy. I know it's not a cork. I need to get a cork. But I just put Milton. Um, moment of truth, my boy. <laughs> she shows him how Milton, he tries to drink the champagne like a shot. Lydia's like, it's not a fucking shot. Like, have some decorum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when do you think Milton has actually just drank champagne? Never. Never. For what? When? <laughs> not happening um well, i thought it was super cute though when he put on her veil and was strutting his stuff and i'm like no that's cute right that real cute. i know their relationship is growing on me even though mm -hmm. up until episode nine honestly they were just so like no we love each other this is gonna work I'm just like okay y'all are a little annoying at this point yeah but seeing them they do have this like comedic energy and laughter mm -hmm. and joy with each other so i'm like okay okay yeah yeah okay. everyone basically says love is blind we get a, a montage of all the people who didn't make it the ones who aren't with us anymore right <laughs> like, and so you know 
Lydia's like, oh, I love my perfectly imperfect relationship. And Milton's like, that doesn't even make sense. It does, actually. This is the one time I'm going to be defending Lydia. It does. So shut the hell up. <laughs> it's like, let her live. Because yeah. you're right, it actually does make sense. So, like, please let her live. Yeah. And then um, it, they're done. They're gone. You could see it. They, they've been mm-hmm. drinking. It's the reception. <laughs> and he leans. They're so fucking awkwardly distanced for a regular ass kiss that he's bending down. Bending. <laughs> I'm like, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm trying to organize myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm about to fall over <laughs> i was like okay that's a really good ending oh, to all of gosh. this oh. so i mean wh- where do you think this finale stacks up in love is blind's finales i mean i do think it shouldn't have been an hour i'm like yeah it could have been 30 minutes for these two weddings so truly truly like, you know i think yeah in the 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 clips with Lydia and Milton, so cute. Loved it, you know? Mm-hmm. We only had one couple get married. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, wow. Which I don't I don't even think I need that many marriages for a, a season to be good. That's like, I don't think the barometer, because I'm just like, love should be the goal, and love doesn't always mean marriage. Mm. Um. But there was a lot of dumpster fires, and yeah. the dumpster fires, as we learn in the reunion, continued with this goddamn cast. Truly. Tr- this has been the messiest <laughs> cast of this entire series. Like Most of these people had no business looking for marriage. Most of them. Because right. the, the things we find out is ridiculous. <sighs> so we're at the reunion. We see Lydia Milton on one couch. We see Stacy and Izzy on the other. Both of them looking pretty cozy. Were you tricked by any of this? No. Okay. No. I figured. I'm just like, no. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't tricked. Like, I've seen, I've literally written about the spoilers of this season. Mm. And yet, I'm still like, why are they trying to act so chummy? Like, it was pissing me off. Because mm. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to second guess myself, but it makes me want to second guess. But I'm just like, I know this can't be. He was literally seen with another woman recently. Right. So, we start off and Lydia and Milton are happily married. 1.5 years at this point. Um, Milton says he rushes home to see her at five something now. And we get a montage of their time together and it ends with another ceremony in Puerto Rico. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, they're so cute. And I saw that her brother married them and or <laughs> performed the ceremony. I guess yeah. you can't get married twice, but yeah, yeah perform the ceremony. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is so cute. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I like the idea of most of these couples doing another wedding that they're like not so rushed for. Yeah. Just in general. So Nick and Vanessa give them an amethyst. Amethyst. Mm. Um, they say it represents something. I don't know. And I'm like a woo-woo girl. I'm not above it. But right. I'm just like, okay, sure, Nick and Vanessa. Yeah. I'm sure they have. <laughs> That's my thing. It's like, I'm sure they have this. <laughs> now, Izzy, they, they left off with finances with Milton. And then they're like, speaking of finances... Um, Izzy talks about his perspective and he's sticking to his story. He's like, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. Uh, people on the pods knew it, which is like, again, why then couldn't Stacy know it? Was it because, and I liked that they finally asked this, is it because you just knew she was in a different tax bracket? Like, let's, let's be for real. Johnny, Johnny is probably regular, mm-hmm. you know, it, you guys seem to be bonding over past relationship hurts. It's It makes sense that it's kind of lower risk to mm-hmm. tell her about this credit while you're you're like, oh, it's probably not going to go as well with Stacy. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, partially, but mostly I just didn't think it was going to be a big deal. 
Okay, Izzy. I'm like, Izzy, that literally doesn't make sense. Because if y'all had had conversations about finances, why wouldn't you naturally say, oh, in the past, I've struggled with paying for things. They went into collections. My credit was messed up, but I've paid mm -hmm. everything off mm -hmm. if it wasn't that big of a deal. If it wasn't that big of a deal. And the fact that he did acknowledge that other people in the pods knew. So I'm like, you literally went out of your way to make mm -hmm. sure that Stacey didn't know directly from you mm -hmm. about your finances. Exactly. So horrendous. Um, so we find out that basically they did not date after the wedding. They were like, oh, we're going to like take a week, process things. Izzy said when they were back, like reunited, he felt like the vibe was off. So it's just like, mm, maybe not. Are you buying that? I think it was so interesting because the way he was saying, he was like, I felt like the vibes were off. And then, you know, Stacy said that she wasn't feeling it. And then she says, I felt like Izzy. Izzy well, not I felt like. I felt like I wanted us to start over. Mm -hmm. And Izzy wanted us to pick up just like mm -hmm. where we left off at the mm -hmm. altar. And so I'm like, again, like that is not the same thing. Like, yeah. yes, you can understand. Yes, I understand. It felt like the vibes were off, but she's telling you, I will only feel comfortable if we slow this down and go back to the beginning. And you didn't yeah. want to do that, which is why y'all stopped dating. Which is very interesting. It's like, truly, what's the rush? What is the rush? <sighs> so uh, it was very interesting because I, I, I think that Vanessa tried to hold back more mm -hmm. after everything that happened. But I noticed she had that face that she gets when she wants to really go in. And she had that face when Izzy said he was really mad at Stacy. She was like, what? You mad at mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which honestly, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. What you mad at? What are you mad at her for? Again, it's a lot of people who did the wrong being mad at the person for having their boundaries afterwards. It's weird. And it's like he also, I also was surprised that Vanessa didn't call him out on what he said about Stacy. Yeah, I thought that the was way she went up. in on Paul last season. But I think she realized she doesn't even have the audience on her side. <laughs> right. She's like, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So she's going to, I think she really tried to hold back this time because, yeah. But it's like, girl, just have common sense on who to target. Like, that would have been fine, but whatever. So um, they didn't speak for a year and they're not together today. Then Johnny and Chris come out. Mm -hmm. We find out they're no longer together. And that Johnny says that, you know, Chris was out of town and then another week went by and then Chris was seeing someone else. And Nick's like, wait, did you end things, Chris? He says, no. Um, and he now loves and lives with the women, with the woman that he cheated with, basically. So... Chris. Oh, Chris. Chris. And I, I literally was like, this is my issue with nice guys, with the good guy, right? Because that persona, I'm like, no, he just ghosted her. He ghosted her and moved on with his life. And she had to hear from her own friend who saw him out that he had a new girlfriend. I think, and this is like, my thing with Johnny is, like, I really didn't think she was a bad person. I think she acted out badly. And to this reunion, she's terrible about owning things. A lot of people in this reunion did not own up to their stuff. But the thing is, is, like, I'm just, like, Johnny deserves love. But just start over. Mm -hmm. Because doubling back to Chris is really messy. And I think... Chris probably was lying in wait a little bit. Mm. He was just like, okay, Johnny, I see I see how you move. Now see mm. how I move. And he definitely got his lift back because now they get to be on international television and he gets to be like, well, what what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> we, you know? I, I got my new girlfriend. Brand love. 
I'm happy. Wow. It's just the game. <laughs> it's just the game. It's like, wow, Chris. Okay, Chris. Okay, Chris. And it's just like, I hope Johnny doesn't internalize any of this. Just keep moving, Johnny. That's all. That's right. the lesson to take from this is just to keep moving instead of cycling around the block. Right. Right. Because even when she said, I wish I wouldn't have ended things with him, I'm just like... She's like, I wish I would have continued dating both. Girl, isn't the lesson that neither of these people were your man? Because a man who does not... A man who cheats on you, honestly, and ghosts you is not your man. Izzy, the way he spoke to you and everything, that's not your man. But then, we learn later... <laughs> Yo, what is up? I think this this cast has such bad vibes. They have mm-hmm. such bad vibes. Because how does it turn out? And I, and everyone, I think a lot of people are like, oh, like Izzy feels like, oh, he doesn't feel attracted to Johnny. So he's like extra going in. It's like, but I think it's still just everyone's trying to prove something, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, Izzy's like, I'm going to prove I can still pull Johnny. Maybe Johnny felt like, I want to prove that I can still pull Izzy. Maybe it's a little bit of a shock to both of their exes. But then even Chris, Chris was way too quick to be like, oh, I didn't care. Right. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Chris don't care. Chris don't moved on with his life. But he's at the same bar when this happened? Like, what are y'all doing? Like, we thought the queer ultimatum was gonna get to an orgy or something. But the straights, the straights are wife swapping. The straights are (laughs) doing horrendous, horrendous things over here. And it's ridiculous. Ugh. And, like, after everything, Izzy, this is why you can't trust men. Because even when they tr- are like, oh, I'm going to take a stance and, oh, I'm just, I'm so pumped up because I really gave it to this woman. Then you're going to stick your tongue down her throat in your Jeep. Don't trust any man. Not you making out with the pod girl. The pod chick. The pod <laughs> chick. That didn't mean nothing. That pod chick. Yo, Izzy. Izzy. Be so for real right now. Be so for real. Like, and it's like also Johnny, stand up. Stand up, sis. This man called you what do you, what were they calling her? Sketchy. Sketchy. I was yeah. like, my brain kept wanting to be like shady. And I'm like, no, it was even worse word. Sketchy. Sketchy. <laughs> he called you sketchy repeatedly, came for your neck, and then you're just like, you know what? He's paying attention to me. Let's make out. I would have gave him my ass to kiss. Exactly. Everyone just needs a little bit more self-love because it's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're back to talking about the Stacey versus Johnny. And this is some bull. This is some bull. So, you know, Stacey's like, yeah, Johnny was saying all this shit about me which we saw Mm -hmm. and then it got back to her johnny and chris want to whisper back and forth want to share with the class (laughs) the hell you gotta say like no just old pals just old pals catching up johnny that's not your friend this none of these people are your friends by how they have acted so don't try to be chummy with chris please don't do that. The man who ghosted you and got a new boo? Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like, what the hell? And plus, you accused this girl of talking shit to Chris. They show the whole clip. They show that Stacy's right. She didn't say shit. She wanted to be out of it when she sat down. Then you came in and was like, they're both doing this. <laughs> She did not, Johnny did not own up to a single thing after the clip was shown. And I'm just like. Right. But also, I'm like, Stacy 
her energy was on 10 also. Because I feel like she wanted to be like, I was chill. And it's like, no, nah, Stacey, you weren't that chill. You came into she don't it. She like her. Right. I'm like, you didn't like her. And you were I like, if she <laughs> looks at me sideways, I'm going to come for her neck. You I know? think that's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> How are you going to be the first one to talk some mess and then act like the victim once we're right. finally here in the same room? I don't get that. Right. Right. I don't get that at all. And so for Johnny to like falsely accuse her of something, then be too busy to talk to freaking cheater, ghoster Chris next to you. Like you guys are chummy when she's talking about how she felt. Like what's going on? And then Johnny had the nerve to be like, well, I was never apologized to. For what? For right. what? I'm like, she didn't have to tell you that she was dating Izzy. Just because you were telling everybody in the women's lounge that that was your man, that that was your number one, no one else had to do that. She's acting like what Stacy keeping that she was interested in Izzy is the same thing as like Lydia and Aaliyah's situation. And no. it's worlds apart. It's like, absolutely worlds apart. Because it's like, I don't even remember Johnny and Stacy talking to each other much, like one on one or not alone. Not much, but it's like we don't see everything. Like I fully believe that Johnny was yeah. going around talking to like probably everyone, everyone that she was yeah. interested in him. But it's like that was your decision. That was your decision. Did <laughs> did Stacy go to your face? Oh, I feel like we're the same person. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> like, what are you talking about right now? <laughs> Anyway, so, um, yeah, in the end, she like, and it's funny because every time someone like confronts Johnny about what she says, she never, she never completely denies it. She was like, oh, I feel like some of the things Stacy said were true because it was, because right. it was, but then she right. still want to be like, but I was deceived. You weren't. She just didn't mm -hmm. want you in her business. Actually, you should learn. You should learn to keep some people out of your business because uh, you'd be right. circling the block too much instead of letting shit go. Right. And it's like at the end of, the, yeah, I'm just like, Milton wasn't telling the guys who he was dating, you know? No. like. Apparently this is that was the, the thing for all of the men. They just didn't tell each other specifically who mm. it was. It was the women who, and I believe it, like women we love to be like, given all the facts when we're dating right. someone. Um, but it's like still, and Stacy, I guess, was more like the guys, but she's acting like that's such a betrayal. It's like, you're not owed that. You're not. So yeah. So anyways, so if we find out that Izzy and Stacy did run into each other at a bar a year later, apparently on Izzy's side of town, because mm -hmm. they're on different side of town, which is like, not surprising. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> and, you know, there was no hate, only love. Um, and apparently they started giving each other advice for their future relationships. And, you know, is, they admit that they have kissed. They did kiss, but you know what? They decided this is just gonna, we're just gonna be friends. Right. And now they're dating other people. Right. And apparently ran into each other at a cooking class on dates. Okay. Hellscape. Hellscape. <laughs> wow. Houston is clearly very small. Maybe apparently, too small. <laughs> too small. Too small. Like, ridiculous um so i guess they're also still with the people who they went on those cooking days with even though stacy was smart because here you go johnny it wasn't just because of you she says no comment she's like you're gonna stay out of my freaking business How about that? Like, i'm like johnny not everything is about you because it stacy wasn't telling anybody no because also johnny get a grip you weren't the only one who liked izzy Izzy was and like a favorite that. of like many of the girls on the first day. And we know that. So like, what's going on? Oof. Anyway, Aaliyah comes out. Our girl Aaliyah. She looking gorgeous. 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 So we're seeing clips. Lydia Ori look mad. And it's like, fix your face. <laughs> right. This is a fix your face moment. Because like, man, Cause why do you have a stank face? You got your man, so what are you stank for? And it's like, it's 
it's wild. It's like really feeling uncomfortable that someone out there does not like you. And to be honest, has good reason. Right. <laughs> like, right. You probably feel a little guilty and called out instead of getting comfy that like, okay, that person just rightfully doesn't, isn't feeling me after everything. You're acting like, well, she's the wrong one. Cause like in our interview with Lydia, Lydia said, well, she doesn't give the grace. Um, she didn't give the grace to me that she loves talking about. And it's like, the grace was there when you guys were friends. <laughs> like, right. if, you, if you fucked up my trust once, I don't owe you another conversation. <laughs> right. Because it's like, I get it. I get that. Because I feel like both Uche and Lydia are trying to hold on to the fact that, like, well, the producers asked us not to say anything. Mm-hmm. We had to agree to not say anything. Mm-hmm. That is what it is. But also, either way, no matter how the decision came down, Aaliyah experienced a betrayal of trust. That does not change her you feelings about the betrayal of trust. From you did you, not have to befriend her. You didn't. You could have kept your space and started like chum chumming it up with someone else. But instead, you wanted to be in her face talking about we're basically the same woman. Like, that's weird. That is so weird. You couldn't even just be with her. You had to try to drop little hints. And that is even scarier. And then once the whole thing came out, you did not listen to her boundaries. You disrespected right. the boundaries. And she couldn't even say, well, like, I I um, didn't disrespect your boundaries. She's, like, watching it back. Like, yeah, I did a lot. But I also was so excited once everything came out and it's like yeah but then once again that means your feelings were more important than the person Mm -hmm. you wronged and that's a red flag you don't get to you're not owed another chance right right because she used the phrase i mean clearly i didn't read the room and it's like no you didn't listen to Aaliyah. you didn't make space for Aaliyah's feelings her experience or what she needed in that moment Mm -hmm. and one of the things that she clearly named was like i don't want you to tell me anything that you Mm -hmm. know about him Mm -hmm. and i don't care what you do with your friends outside of the pods Aaliyah told you what she needed and you didn't Mm -hmm. like honor that so no, no, she don't like you and she don't rock with you. And that was no. a complete bet- betrayal of her trust. Yep. And like she actually at the end of the day didn't know you from a can of paint. And for you to choose to break her boundaries, like go past her boundaries when she named them. Mm-hmm. It's like obviously naturally her she would start to think that you were doing it intentionally. Because yeah. what what was she what trust would she fall back on that you aren't doing it intentionally? Exactly. Exactly. It's like she don't know. She's not inside your head and shit, but all she can do is just read, like, what you're doing. Right. And she's also hearing things, which does come up later, that she was like, I heard you guys did know. Then Lydia's like, well, (laughs) there was one conversation that me and Uche were like, the show was casting, but I didn't know. But you went around saying you might. So you you took note of that conversation, boo boo, and you know mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you know that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she mentioned it to Aaliyah, I'm just like, it's- like how dumb. Like stop. That's that's the thing that really gets me. It's just like own up to it, and there's a lot of not owning up to things. I I don't like this. But Nick was going around asking like Lydia if producers should have allowed her it doesn't matter what Lydia thinks because she wasn't allowed how about for once let's go <laughs> like the whole, I pulled an Izzy I'm like <laughs> this table over. but no I, this is the thing that pisses me off about reality tv is that we have producers here they're nameless faceless most of the mm-hmm. time they don't get to be held accountable for shit mm-hmm. um so nick gets to sit there and act like there's some transparency or some productive conversation going on being like well lydia do you think you should have been allowed to continue first of all of course she's gonna say yes she got married how about ask Aaliyah, which Aaliyah's like, you know what? I do believe they were, they should have been allowed, but I think mm-hmm. like certain things should have been handled differently. I don't think they should have been allowed. I think That's they should have been thought. sent their asses packing. Yeah. And they that better do that thought. next time. Right. It's, 
Yeah, they should have sent them home. Like, I get it. Like, that. Because obviously Aaliyah isn't going to be like, no, they shouldn't have been sent home. And she's sitting right in front of a couple that consists of one of the people. But I'm just like, no, they should have been sent home. They should have been sent home. No one's owed this experience. You say no to people all the goddamn time. So why is it different for Uche and Lydia? You wanted the drama. Let's just own up to that. Like, and you guys make shady (laughs) decisions all the time. Let's be real. Love is blind. Right. You don't have an excellent track record. So, like, learn from this. I'm really pissed that a dark skinned black woman gets the short end of the stick in this whole entire experience. And I don't want to. And it's not pity Aaliyah. Aaliyah says she got her man. She went Mm -hmm. on an RB cruise. (laughs) <laughs> which Quita gave me your whole love Jones auntie <laughs> like wow wow not on some Stella got her groove back type cruise <laughs> sure did sure did love it for her oh gosh love it for um, her um we find out no one's fucking with Uche in this cast period when Milton said we were never friends we were never peers. I'm like, I knew that. Exactly. <laughs> like, there was no mistake, Mr. See you in the group text. There was no mistake in that. What is wrong with Uche? What is wrong with him? I'm like, also, why was he talking about Izzy? He had it for everybody, apparently. <laughs> and it's like, it's giving very insecure. If you have to run your mouth about everybody, and you run your mouth acting like you're the greatest person in the room. I'm not going to say the big buzzword that's out there about people like that. But it's giving a little bit of that. And if you know, you know. It is. And it's very telling he didn't show up. That he part. Did not show I'm up like, you have all the smoke for people. You're on, you're texting people on their wedding day, Uche. <laughs> The messiest bitch you know is a man. And now he sent Aaliyah and Lydia the same text. Same text. The same text. You couldn't even send a, an original text message couldn't. to either woman? Couldn't. Couldn't. But had you shook, too scared couldn't. to show up to the reunion. Because he didn't want to answer for anything he said or did. Demon things. <laughs> demon, demon things for sure. For sure. Like, what are you talking about? Saying, oh, if you want to talk about any... I'm watching the show. I don't care. Of course you're watching the show. Who didn't think you were going to watch the show? If you want to talk about something, hit me up. No. I don't. No. If you wanted to talk about something, you could have been at the reunion. Period. And the fact that he would text Milton, heard you got married, want to talk about it? No. What? He acts like Milton is an abused, like, wife? <laughs> like, that that Lydia is holding him hostage? Like, I know that was kind of his goal to kind of paint it that way. But it's like, this man has real friends. And you have to know that. You right. have to. Right. So why do you think he's going to talk to you about anything, weirdo? Literally. I'm like, he wouldn't even tell you he was dating Lydia in the pods. Why would he talk about his marriage to her with you? And there's so many cast members in this one cast who has never heard of boundaries in their whole entire life. Literally. So many. Don't <laughs> don't know what it is. Couldn't couldn't pick it in a lineup. Milton believes that this season's all about getting past people's perceptions. Mm-hmm. So, okay, sure. Um, and Ali admits they did date after filming. And, you know, he apparently told people that she wasn't his type. Fuck Uche. Mm. Fuck Uche. I'm so done. I'm so done. So done. Like, I'm just like, what do you even mean by that? And, and we can ask the same thing of JP coming up. What do you even mean? Something is wrong with these men. Something is very wrong with them. So I don't know wrong. what it is. I don't know what it is. It's so weird. So she said he was still mean. 
and condescending. Mm. And you know, the Uche that was at the barbecue was not the one in the pots. He, it kind of was. I was like, girl, that was the exact same man that was like, oh wow, so you're a recent cheater. That was the same person. That was the same person. He just really turned shit around on you to make you feel really bad and wanting his approval. And that Mm. is, um, that's a tactic. That's a tactic right. for some people. Right. So, yeah. In the end, JP and Taylor, they come out. So, JP said that he went back into his shell out of the pods when they were in Mexico because of the cameras. Taylor Taylor was having none of it. Period. None of it. She was like, everyone here isn't used to freaking cameras so that's an excuse and she was like and then when the camera's away it was still awkward and he was just like long days it's just such long days and da 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 what were we supposed to do like you've never been in a room with another human being before what do you mean what are we supposed to do literally i'm like you've never gotten to know someone before in your life like what are you talking about and then when for him to have the audacity to say, I mean, will you like um, badgering me about it? He didn't use the word badgering, but like he did. That's, he hounding, he hounding like me or something like that. Essentially, it's being like, like painting her as the nag. I'm like, sir. She kept asking you what is wrong, like what's going on, and it took you multiple days for you to tell, give her this excuse of her wearing makeup on the first day threw off the vibes. Something was wrong. You just didn't want to say it. And I probably still don't really want to say it. He was like, oh, the makeup thing. It was like the wrong thing to say. Um, But then he said it again. He was just like, it came out wrong. I just, the whole point was like, I liked you without your makeup. It's like, you still treated a human being crazy for makeup you supposedly didn't like. So anyways, Taylor says that she forgives him. Don't treat another woman like that again. We have no control over that. I've literally said that to a guy, and it's just like, they probably will. (laughs) More than likely. (laughs) More than likely. So um, JP says that his friends are usually the icebreaker for him. So another thing. And then Vanessa asked if Taylor looks like the people he dated. He answered sort of. Stacy was like, I know, mean? literally. What does that mean? What does that even mean? What does that mean? Anyway, I Milton, sometimes he's a little petty king. So he, <laughs> Taylor was just like, yeah, when I first saw JP, I was like, thank God he's tall. And Milton's like, he's tall? <laughs> like Milton. Your gigantic ass. Shut right. up. Right. Like, sir, you are like really tall. Like what? <laughs> Not everyone can just be lounging on counters and shit. Right. Like what? <laughs> oh, so, you know. Uh, then I actually liked the questions that Nick and Vanessa asked the cast this time around. Usually they're really mm-hmm. stupid, but one was just like, who would you actually hit on in real life on this cast? Taylor says she would have hit on Chris. Don't give him that. He Don't trash. give him nothing. Don't give him nothing. <laughs> he, his head has already been so gassed up. For nothing. Just for not being Izzy? I don't know. Right. Um, so don't give him nothing. And then Izzy said Stacy, which is like believable. Sure. Uh, Aaliyah said no one. And it's like, thank you. Period. <laughs> period. All the men gave BS answers <laughs> to each other. Um. So yeah, that was basically the reunion. It was. Also, I want to call out Lydia because Lydia said Milton, and I do not believe that. If she they said were Izzy. Comp- Lydia? No, 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 no. I'm talking about in the episode mm, in Mexico. Mm, you're so right. She exactly. Said, Izzy's Izzy. Right. Literally. So I was just like, not you saying your man because he your man. I mean, it is her man. It's a year. <laughs> It's a year and a half in by now. She's not thinking wow. about Izzy 
at wow. this point. So I guess I'm toxic like, in Aquarius and I probably would have just answered it honestly. I'm like, wow. Now nah, you got to get home to that boy afterwards. He's tall. He could just pick you up and throw you somewhere. Nah. <laughs> oh, People are like, actually, I'm going to put all your favorite snacks in the top shelf so you can't get it. <laughs> Climb up the countertop. Oh, oh, oh why don't you get Izzy to help you? Right, period. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, that's not gonna go well. That's not gonna go well. Then they did the whole songs thing, but I really didn't care about that. No. No. I mean, I like that Aaliyah said thank you next. I'm like, yes. I just love Aaliyah though. (laughs) Truly. I just want... uh, Okay, do you think because in the past, we have seen Netflix do a show called Perfect Match, where basically all the single people from their dating shows Mm -hmm. come in and they like match up. Um, Honestly, the first season was horrendous for black yes. women. But Absolutely horrendous. Do you? Well, no, no, no. She's not single. She's, She's not. not. Single. And I don't believe it would be, if she were single, mm-hmm. I don't think it would be any better because I don't believe that Netflix Netflix actually cast men who actually are attracted to like black women or like unambiguously black. They need another Cameron or something like and it doesn't even mean like Cameron being white it's just like a good guy. A good guy literally. (laughs) That's it um yeah and like you know what I do still believe in Aaliyah reparations though and she could be on like the circle or hell put her on Flora's lava with her man. I'll be watching Flora's lava all the time. Oh my gosh, what is this? I have not heard of this. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Flora's lava is like, remember the game when you're like a kid? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever yeah. been like, oh, don't touch the yeah, floor. floor. Let's jump yeah. from the couch. That's literally it. <laughs> That's literally it. They have rooms wow. full of lava, but it's like probably like thick water. Right. And you just can't fall in and they have like the obstacle course is like different rooms and you have to the quickest team to get to the other side um gets to go to the next stage which is climbing a volcano and then you win some money wow okay it's literally hilarious okay. hilarious i, I love need it. to check this out okay yes yes wow. so uh, they had people from other netflix shows do mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. so that's why i'm like in there yeah i mean i'm a, i watch the perfect match because i'm a sucker for reality tv but like yeah it was just so horrendous to the black woman on the show like it's really bad and no, Leah doesn't yeah. deserve that at no all. no all right do we have a bb moment a beautiful black moment <laughs> Aaliyah saying that she met a man on this cruise. On the R&B, R&B cruise. Let's be very specific. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that, but yes. Nah, 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 because that's, that's the blackest part of it. That's it's smelling part. like shea butter. There's mm-hmm. incense that has been snuck onto mm-hmm. this boat. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure they talked about some poetry. Yes, yes. So <laughs> she said he's chivalrous, I guess. So <sighs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I mean, do we have a chaotic bisexual moment? All the men had joke answers of being into each other, but that's cool. Yeah. Right. I wish. Chris and Milton <laughs> saying that they would hit on each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. No. Um, I think this, I think season five was gooder. It was bad. It's the it worst was- season, I feel like. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be back, but like, I don't know what it is with Texas, but like, stay away from them, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know what it is either. Because the first season of The Ultimatum was also the first Marry or, or what is it? Marry and Move On, The Ultimatum. Yeah. Yeah. That was also filmed in it Texas. Was. I think it was filmed in Austin. And it's I- like the, Renee and Carter just really. Wiped completely out of the show. There was another couple too. When I'm talking about, because there was wait, there was another, another one? one. Yeah, 
I only knew about Carter and um, Renee and then the lawsuit. The couple. lawsuit. Um, um, that's it. It's Paige and Josh Simmons, according wow. to Men's Health. So, yeah, they revealed it earlier this month. They were like, wow. they were sent, I guess, immediately back. Uh, but that didn't work also heard that Mal is now one of the casting directors for the Queer Stop Ultimatum. It. Stop mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Stop like, it. Wow. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Mal was hanging out with Kalani recently. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I shared that on our Instagram, by the way. I try to share all the the queer black things that I think um, yes. aligns with us. So please follow yeah. us on Instagram. But yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. So, yeah. Like they need to hire more people who have been through the experience potentially to support with casting. Mm-hmm. Maybe it will help with like them maybe breaking through some of this like lack of finding people who, you know, clearly only date one type of person. I still want to know what JP's type is. Wh- who's the type of woman that he dates? I still want to know. I I do too. This is all true. So I don't know if we're actually going to see any of these people again. I still would not be surprised if we do end up seeing them on the next dating show. If they're offered it, they might be saying what they're saying about their relationship status now, but I'm just... I mean, Izzy said me. He said him and his boo weren't even official. So I could he definitely said it's see, close. It's no close. So it's like, what does that even mean? I could definitely see him on a perfect match. I could yeah. see Johnny on a perfect match for sure. Yeah, <laughs> he would be a freaking demon on. <laughs> he would be Bartiz. <laughs> I don't know if he would be Bartiz because his his whole thing still is like, I'm the nice guy. I'm a romantic. But it's like, at this point that we hear you make, you're making out with everybody, Izzy. Right. That's what I, my assumption right. is going to be. He's going to make out with anyone who is interested. Right. So, I guess that's it for season five. Quita, oh would God. you be back to podcast with me for the next season? I'd do it. Why not? Let's do it. Yay! <laughs> I enjoyed having you on for sure. Um, Where can people keep up to you in the meantime? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at hello underscore Quita for hot takes on political issues, pop culture, and photos of my iced coffee. Nice. Um, I'll also have links for Quita down below. For me, I am Nicole Weaver. I am writing for Collider right now about reality TV. Um, I actually um, writing about House of Villains, a new mm-hmm. show, which features messy. another another Love Is Blind alumni, um, Shake. Sure did. I talked to Shake wow. about the show, so I can link that article down below. Um, and I'm still covering Big Brother. We are now in the jury, so our interviews are going to be taped. Um, but yeah, keep keep out for that. And then who knows what the next show will be to recap. Maybe I'll take a little bit um, of a break. But if you also have suggestions, throw them down in the comments. I will absolutely take them in consideration But yeah, if you haven't already checked out all the other good stuff we have on this channel, we talked about and just like that, Quita was on there along with my um, co-host for that series, Arami Day. I talked about the queer ultimatum actually, at least just the whole season of the finale with um, Alicia. And I talked about Cruel Summer Season 2. If you like Mm. more of the suspense, it is spooky ooky season. So that's what we got (laughs) right Mm. now for that mood. So, so yeah, I hope you follow us also on all the different socials to keep up in case anything else is coming up. And, yeah, I wish you all just loving yourselves not circling back to your exes because it's so unnecessary don't do it and you know if you have luck going on the r&b cruise you never know you never know you know (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) (laughs) all right
right, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>